had some pretty cool experiences and around the topic of forgiveness. Yeah. So I'm hoping by the end of my talk today that you all will have some new energy around this topic. Yeah. You know, it can be a scary topic because we, as humans, <laughs> hang on to stuff. Do we not? We do. Yes, yes. And to let go of those things takes some courage. It takes some courage to release and let those things go. Yeah. And, you know, they become part of our identity. They become part of our history. And, and it's, we're walking around with, with these parts of ourselves that we, we don't quite want to let go of just yet. And sometimes we will, we have these parts of ourselves, these stories that we love to, to share with others. <laughs> we love to get agreement from others, right? We love to say, well, God, let me tell you how badly my past was. Let me tell you how much I suffered in this situation or in that situation. Am I the only one that's... Done that? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just checking. So, yeah, for, for years, for years, I did this. I would share what happened to me as a child and all the details of it, and I wanted you to say to me, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Those people were so horrible to you. And I did that over and over and over again. And I, I get the agreement. People would do exactly what I wanted them to do, and they would validate my my past and my history, and then at some point I stopped doing that. <laughs> I don't need to share the details of everything I've gone through. It's not necessary, but, but we do this. Yes, we do this, and why do we do that? We do it because we want validation. We want somebody to validate what we've gone through, which isn't a bad thing, actually. Sometimes it's part of our healing to share with somebody, this is what I went through, this is what I experienced. And to be seen, to have somebody actually see us. I worked with a, a counselor quite a few years ago. And within the first 20 minutes, I shared with her my past and my story. And I'd never felt more seen by anybody. In 20 minutes, I just met her. And I don't even remember what she said or what she did, but it felt so validating. And I needed that. So sometimes we need that. It's not a bad thing. But we all know when we've worn out our welcome. We all know when we have taken it too far and, and we're sucking the life. <laughs> so, right? We all know that. We, we all know that point. I don't know. Maybe some don't. Some might be asleep to that. But we've all, exper we've all been on the receiving end of that. Yeah, it's like, okay, please. I've, I've heard this story now way too many times. Way, way, way too many times. Yeah. So, you know, every single one of us on the planet has bumped up against the topic of forgiveness at one point or another. Whether you are a spiritual person or not, because truly we are all spiritual beings. We are all on a spiritual journey, whether we're aware of it or not. You don't have to come to a center like this. You don't have to sit in meditation and prayer on a daily basis. Every single person on this planet, what we have in common is that we've experienced pain. We've experienced some trauma from our past. Someone has hurt us in some way, or we have hurt someone else. Maybe not intentionally, but every single one of us has that in common. Yes? Every single one of us. And at some point, we bump up against this topic of forgiveness, where we're faced with a choice hmm, to forgive, ourselves to forgive someone else and so at some point we experience that and that is not an always an easy thing to face when it comes to us as this choice as a choice because we often want to hang on to things we want to hang on to the past we want to hang on to it because, and we stay in that place of stubbornness, we stay in that place of resistance, because to let go of the anger means what? It means we have to then face the pain. And that's not always easy. 
It's not always an easy thing. You know, and there's two parts of ourselves. There's the human part. The human part loves to judge. It loves to criticize. It loves to compare. It loves to say, you're wrong and I'm right. And then there's our spiritual self. And our spiritual self <laughs> only knows love, only knows peace, only knows joy. These two parts of ourselves. And so we're vacillating between both. Yeah, we have this experience of, of both. Eckhart Tolle said this about forgiveness. He said, forgiveness is recognizing that what they did was an act of unconsciousness. Do not equate what they did with who they are. Because at the very truth of their being, they are a spiritual being. And we forget that. We focus on the humanness, and we only see the things that they did were, that were bad, or that were wrong, or that were harmful. We forget that who they are is, that, is a divine being. You strip away all the humanness, and what's underneath that is a soul. What's underneath that is a divine being. And we can get that intellectually. It's, it, we can like, okay, I kind of get that but they still did me wrong. <laughs> and we, that person did me wrong, and I will never, ever be able to forgive them for that. <clears throat> but it's, it's really, just as he said, it's what they did, but it's not who they are. It's not who they are at the deepest core of their being. It's not who they are. And, you know, their unconscious behavior, as he talks about that, when we do things that are mean or harmful to somebody else, we're unconscious. And what that means is, when we are unconscious, we have forgotten our truth. We have forgotten that we are divine, we're a divine being. And we are acting unconsciously. We are making choices that are hurtful to somebody else because we have forgotten that we're actually one with that person. We have forgotten that there is a divine intelligence that exists within all beings. It exists within every insect, within every tree, within every rock, within every being. And so someone who is acting out, someone who is doing something that is harmful, they have forgotten that. So they become unconscious. In other words, they, they fall asleep, so to speak. They have forgotten that truth. They have forgotten that. Ah, yeah. So, it's important to remember that. Because if we can remember that, then we're not, we can then move more deeply into our heart. We can move more deeply into the divine essence that we are. And not be so focused on what they did that was wrong or what they did that was harmful. Because what does that do for us? As we focus on what someone has done that, where they have hurt us, how does that impact us? Poison. What was that? Poison. Poison, yes. Yeah. You know, there's a saying that says anger is, is, is taking poison and expecting the other person to die. <laughs> right? That's what anger is. That's what resentment is. We think by staying angry that on some level that person is feeling that. They have no idea. They have no idea what we're, what we're thinking. But we somehow we think I'm just going to stay angry at that person and they're going to be suffering because I'm so angry at them. They don't have a clue as to what's really going on. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It means we're harming ourselves. We're actually harming ourselves more than we are harming them. When we hold anger, because the truth of our being is, is divine, every cell of our being vibrates with this energy, when we are angry, our cells actually contract. Our bodies contract, they constrict. The fluids in our body actually can't move in the same way when we are holding anger. So 
any time we are in that place of judgment or criticism, our bodies constrict. And so when, we, when we're reminded of the love that we are, our bodies open. Our bodies open. Now, I'm not saying that forgiveness is an easy thing. It's not. It's not. It's a process. I love this topic because I myself have done the work and I've experienced the freedom that is available on the other side of letting something go. Robert's song was so beautiful because it, it, it's, it was such a beautiful illustration of what's possible, letting something go, letting it go. I was, um, when I was two, my parents divorced. And my mother gave, said to my father, I want you to have full custody of Leah. And that was an agreement that they made. And the reason my mother did that was because she didn't think that she would be a good mom. She knew because of how she treated my, my half-brother Mark that her feeling was, I, have a, I think I'm going to do the same thing, so you take her. Now, I knew this, but as I grew up, how I interpreted that was that she didn't love me. She didn't want me. And I spent my entire life, up until I was probably in my 40s, angry at her, resenting her. It was an interpretation that I made up about what happened. It took me a long time to forgive her for that. And, and, and this is what we do, yes? There's the facts, and then there's what we interpret it. It's the story that we add to what happened to us. And it's the story that causes us pain, not the experience itself. We, it's our perception of what has happened that causes the pain. And I chose to focus on the story and the perception that my mom didn't want me, and I lived that way for years, impacting how I interacted with her, impacting how I felt on a regular basis. We all do this. We all, we all have these stories and we hang on to them as if they were the truth about that person, about the situation. And I bet every single one of you, as you're thinking about this, you know, yeah, you know, it's like, ooh, I'm, I've been adding a lot to that situation. I've been adding a lot, uh, there's some things that I perhaps have misinterpreted. Is it possible? Is it possible that you've misinterpreted a situation? Is it possible that you've added more than really was the truth of what happened? Is it possible? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So we hang on to stuff. We hang on to things. I love this quote by Jack Canfield. People hang on to their own hate and anger so fiercely, so stubbornly, because once hate is gone, they are forced to deal with their own pain. It feels good to be in that righteous place, but there's a cost to it. There's a cost to hanging out in that place of making somebody wrong. We make others wrong so that we can be right. And it feels good in the moment, but our bodies are so tuned in, our spiritual selves are so tuned in to the vibration of love and light. On some level, we feel guilt about that. If you're tapped in enough, whenever I have a judgment about someone or something, I can feel it. I can almost feel it in my heart. Something doesn't feel right because our divine nature is to be loving, is to be forgiving, is to be accepting. And when we find ourselves in that judgmental place, the whole body just starts to react. So it's an awareness. It's an awareness that we can have. Michael Beckwith, 
Reverend Michael Beckwith said, forgiveness is self-healing. Because when we are forgiving, or when we are hanging on to something, it has such an impact on the body temple, it has such an impact on us. So when we forgive, our bodies are free. Our mind is free. We can then move through life experiencing more freedom, experiencing more joy. That's what's possible. And so the first, the first step, there's, there's the basic level of forgiveness, and then there's the advanced level. <laughs> Y'all up for the advanced level? <laughs> okay, okay, Robert's excited. Okay. Just one hand went up there. <laughs> so, so the basic level is what I was talking about, interpretation. Okay, that's, that's, that's just to look at what are the perceptions that, that I'm holding. Is it possible that I'm interpreting something and adding more story to something? Is it possible? So that's the first step, is to look at that. What's the interpretations that I've been adding to this situation? Yeah. The next step, the next step is to look at is that, that the thing that happened to you, the experience that you had, that there is a divine purpose. This is the advanced level. Okay, so ears open, heart open, okay. <laughs> that there is a divine purpose for why that person came into your life and caused you pain. There is a divine reason. There are no accidents that somebody has come into your life and caused you some kind of pain in your life. If we only look at it through one lens, that person hurt me, that person did X, whatever that is, and we keep holding that, we miss, we miss the entire opportunity that's there for us. Which is that there is always a divine reason why that per somebody comes into our life and creates that whatever that is, that drama, trauma, upset, hurt. There's a divine reason for all of it. And what that is, is it's helping us to grow and to evolve our consciousness. That's why we're here. That's why we're here as these human beings, spiritual beings, having a human experience, is to grow, is to evolve. We're not here to just go day by day and going through the day and doing whatever it is we're doing. And yes, that's the human stuff we have to take care of. But there's a greater purpose for why we are here. Every single person that has hurt you is the greatest messenger, the greatest teacher. And some of you are thinking, okay, I'm sorry, that person... No, that person is not a teacher. I don't see how they're a teacher to me. I don't see what they've given me in my life. I don't see it. And if the reason you can't see it is because you're not in your heart. You're up here in your head. Our heads will analyze and try to figure out why, 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 why is this person in my life? I don't know. I don't really care. They just hurt me. We have to get quiet. We have to tune in. We have to drop into our heart and then ask the question, why, what's the divine purpose for why this person is in my life? Or why this person came into my life? What's the divine reason for why I experienced such pain from this individual? Why? What's the divine reason? How is this person a messenger to me? How is this person a teacher to me? How is this person helping me to evolve my consciousness? <clears throat> it's easy to say, everybody, there's a, a lot of people that we could easily say are asleep on this planet, that have no awareness of what's happening. But here's the thing, but we are all evolving. Whether we are aware of it or not, we are all evolving. We are all shifting our consciousness. Now, those of us that are committed to our spiritual practices and we're working on it on a regular basis, the evolution might speed up a little bit more, but every single one of us is on a spiritual journey. And if someone comes into your life who has caused you pain, hmm, interesting. 
you both find each other at a particular time, you're helping each other. It's, it's almost as though there's an agreement on some level to come together, to support each other, taking each other's hand and helping each other up the staircase of evolution. That's essentially what we're doing for each other. So that's the advanced level, <clears throat> is becoming aware of that and, and getting quiet enough to tune into your heart. Those, those incidents that have happened to you, it could be 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Some of us are hanging on to things that happened a long time ago. I get it because I've done it myself. And we think it's justified. And I get that too. But really, all we're doing is hurting ourselves. We're not hurting them. We're hurting ourselves. And wouldn't you want more freedom, more love, more joy in your life? I can tell you that this is a topic that I've worked on so much over the last probably 10 years. I have so much more freedom within me as a result of it. I've forgiven my cousin and my step mother and my mother and my aunt and all of these individuals that caused me such pain as a child, abusive situations that I experienced. I now am at a point where I can say thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me to bring me to this path, to be able to stand in front of you and to be able to teach this. It's only because I've walked the walk. It's only because I have walked that journey myself. <coughs> and has it been painful? You better believe it. But I wanted something more. And so that first step is, okay, What's, what are the stories? What are the interpretations? What are the perceptions that I've been hanging on to? Am I willing to release that? Am I willing to let that go? Next step, how is this person, how has this person been a teacher to me? How has this person been a messenger to me in my life? What's the divine reason why this person came in? And move into your heart and trust and it's layers. I, I know I have gotten to a place where I thought I forgave somebody, and then, hmm, five years later, whatever it is, oh, okay, there it is again, wow, another layer. <laughs> it's layers. We think we're complete, oh, oh, I'm done, I've, I've forgiven that person, I'm in a great space. And then suddenly, oh, not so much, okay, another yeah. layer. So it's trusting the process, but it's having the courage to dive in and do the work. Having the courage. It's such a brave thing, truly. And there's so much that's available to us if we're willing to do that. Colin Tipping wrote a book called Radical Forgiveness. And because it's radical. There, what I'm talking to you about is radical. <laughs> and it's unlike what most people know about out in the world. It's like, oh, let's just let bygones be bygones. Way more than that. It's actually, forgiveness is a spiritual practice. Can you get that? It's a spiritual practice. It's not about just letting something go. That is maybe step one. Yeah. Yeah. So, there's a lot that's available to us. And as, here's another layer to it. So as we're looking at the individuals who have hurt us, one thing to be aware of is that hurt people hurt people. So those who are in pain are the ones that hurt others. We've all done that ourselves too. When we're in pain, what do we do? We lash out, we hurt someone else. So anybody who has hurt me in my past, as I look back and as I look at and understand and have compassion for their history and their experiences and their life, I can start to see their humanity. And so a great question to ask is what are they really crying out for? Anybody who has hurt us, there's something that they're crying out for. There's something that they themselves 
are in pain about. And as soon as we ask this question, we drop into compassion immediately. You cannot ask this question and not feel compassion in your heart. It's just not possible. So I'm going to ask you right now to close your eyes. And I want you to bring to mind someone that you're most present to right now. Someone that you know perhaps you could forgive or are willing to forgive. And just asking the question, what are they crying out for? What are they crying out for? And just notice. Notice what comes into your heart. Notice what's there. What are they crying out for? And you might hear a word, you might feel something in your heart. But just notice. Notice how your heart begins to open and that you begin to feel compassion. Just by simply asking the question. And so opening your eyes. So this is a simple question to ask. And you don't have to start with the really hard ones. All of us have, all of you have hard people. It's like, okay, I can forgive this person, but not this person. So start, pick an easy one. <laughs> pick an easy one. Start with, that's okay. You don't have to do the advanced course right off the bat. <laughs> start with an easy one, but ask the question. Be willing to ask the question. And as you end your day, Edwin Gaines said this, Edwin Gaines, a uh, wonderful unity minister, said at the end of her day, every day she asked the question, who have I placed outside my heart today? Because day to day stuff happens. There's stuff that happened 30 years ago, and then there's the person that cut me off in traffic, and God dang it, I just <laughs> want to scream at that person, right? There's people like that. Total strangers, or it could be a coworker, or it could be, right? Day to day stuff that happens. And if you ask this question at the end of the day, there might be quite a few people that show up. And so you move into your heart, you move into that beautiful energy that you are, and you just send them a silent blessing. Send them a silent blessing. What a beautiful practice. Because we're all connected, we're all one. And this is why this is the art of forgiveness, because it truly is an art. And it takes practice. It's not something that you're going to get right out, of the, right out of the gate perfectly. It's not meant to be perfect process. But be willing to practice. Be willing to open your heart. Be willing to do the work, to take one step at a time. Because what's possible for you is freedom. What's possible is joy. What's, poss what's possible is more love. Are you up for that? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So let's move into prayer. Practitioners, I'm going to ask that you stand in high consciousness. Mm. And so in this moment, in this sacred space, we recognize and know that we are all on this journey together. We are all on this journey of forgiveness. And wherever we are at is absolutely perfect. There are no mistakes that you are here today. There are no mistakes that you are hearing this today. And I am knowing that every single one of us continues to take steps in moving forward and having the courage to say yes, to say yes to forgiveness, to be willing even just a little bit more than we were yesterday to move into our hearts, to forgive, to let go. Because I am knowing that every single person in here is remembering the truth of who they are, the love that they are, and what's possible for them as they take steps towards forgiveness. And so I give thanks for this. I give thanks for the unfolding that is happening with all of us. Because as we forgive, as we take steps towards forgiveness, it then gives others permission to do the same on this planet. 
And as we do this as a collective, it begins to create more peace. It begins to create more harmony. It begins to create more unity on this planet. And so I am knowing that, that as we say yes to forgiveness in our life, that we are giving ourselves a gift, as we are giving that gift to all. And so I say, great, great thank you. Feeling such gratitude for the opportunity to do this work. And so I let this go, and I allow it to be. I hand it over to the divine that always says yes. And so it is. So it is.